so these are the mcqs these are very tricky mcqs uh, <coughs> the cbsp plays a, a little trick so we have to to pick that trick in order to answer the question correctly and there is a very brief concept in each mcq that is least amount of blood in left ventricle is present during which phase of the cardiac cycle that is isovolumetric relaxation during whenever there is a systole so the blood the maximum blood is comes out from the left ventricle when the maximum blood comes out from the left ventricle that is during ejection phase but uh, during isovolumetric relaxation what happens that it dilates but both valves are closed so the amount of blood that is least in the left ventricle is during isovolumetric relaxation maximum amount of blood in the left ventricle is that is during isovolumetric contraction isovolumetric contraction that is there is maximum amount of blood but if the question asks maximum amount of blood in the left ventricle is reached during which phase now that is actually the late diastole that is the late diastole maximum amount of blood in the left ventricle is present during isovolumetric contraction if that is not in the option then of course that is the late diastole that is the atrial contraction that is the uh, the slow feeling phase uh, but if the question asks reached maximum amount of blood in the left ventricle is reached there is late diastole maximum amount of blood in the left ventricle is present that is isovolumetric contraction similarly least amount of blood in the left ventricle is achieved during that is slow ejection phase early ejection phase and late ejection phase i'm talking about ejection so when there is ejection phase is over there is least amount of blood in the left ventricle so that is reached at the end of systole but least amount of blood in the left ventricle is present during isovolumetric relaxation there is a little trick maximum aortic pressure in the left maximum aortic pressure in the in the left ventricle so maximum aortic maximum aortic pressure that is in the aorta that is present during slow ejection phase now why slow ejection phase we know that ejection phases are two the rapid ejection phase and the slow ejection phase and 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 common sense says that it is actually the rapid ejection phase that would that would cause uh, maximum aortic pressure but that is not the right answer actually the reason is that the ejection phase is divided into two the rapid ejection phase and the slow ejection phase what happens during the rapid ejection phase the blood comes out from the left ventricle rapidly so that pressure plus during slow ejection phase still the blood is coming out from the left ventricle so more pressure is added to the blood already present in the aorta more pressure is added to the already pressure that was present in the aorta so if we are adding more pressure and the blood is in close continuity and we are adding more pressure so so the maximum pressure is during slow ejection phase the second answer to this question is why not during the rapid ejection phase one was there is the addition of there is addition of successive pressure are coming out from the left ventricle uh, another reason is inertia the blood blood is having uh, inertia so it 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 gets uh, maximum inertia during that phase the third is um, when the blood uh, comes out rapidly during ejection phase during rapid ejection phase what happened during slow ejection phase there is vasospasm so when there is vasospasm there is more resistance there is maximum aortic pressure so the answer to this is that so this is a volume curve the maximum volume of the left ventricle occurs at that is isovolumetric contraction <clears throat> so if we remember this diagram if we remember these curves these uh, we can pick the concept in each mcq very easily so the the maximum amount of volume in the um, volume of blood in the left ventricle is during isovolumetric contraction phase during isovolumetric contraction and the minimum amount of blood in the left ventricle is during isovolumetric relaxation phase <clears throat> similarly the aortic pressure pressure in the aorta that is maximum during late ejection phase and uh, that is minimum during atrial systole atrial systole mean late diastole diastole is divided into two phases early diastole and late diastole i already discussed in detail in previous lectures so during late diastole the atria contracts so atrial systole or late diastole aortic pressure we know that aortic pressure that is uh, if we take 120 by 80 120 is actually during systolic 
usually the late ejection phase and um, it is not uh, during the early ejection phase it is during the late ejection phase because the pressure is being successively added in the early ejection phase suppose it was 100 then during the slow ejection phase that was 20 so both are added at the end of uh, ejection so during the late ejection phase that is the maximum and the minimum blood pressure is during at the end of diastole blood pressure is dec uh, decreasing in the aorta in the diastole but at the end of diastole that is decreased because of the, the the vessels are now dilated at the end of diastole at the end of diastole when they are dilated when they are maximally dilated so the pressure is very low at the end of diastole now this is the pressure in the ventricle now we have to we have to look carefully what the question is asking what the stem of the mcq states now there are three pressures in the iota we already know maximum aortic pressure late ejection phase minimum aortic pressure we already discussed it that is during the late diastole or the atrial systole now the the ventricle this is the ventricle ventricular pressure not volume the uh, similarly the 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 the, max, the pressure in the ventricle is maximum during late ejection phase because the ventricle when it is it is contracting the pressure inside uh, the ventricle is increasing until the end of systole and the end of systole that is slow ejection phase so maximum pressure in the ventricle slow ejection phase similar to that of aortic pressure but the minimum pressure is at the end of isovolumetric relaxation at the end of isovolumetric relaxation this is the end of isovolumetric relaxation or uh, this is actually the start of the start of diastole or actually this is the start of early filling phase at the end of isovolumetric relaxation or the start of early filling phase start of early filling phase start of early filling phase concept is clear maximum during late ejection phase minimum during end of isovolumetric relaxation or start of early early filling phase now the atrial pressure pressure in the atria that is maximum during atrial contraction when the atria contracts now we are talking about the atria when the atria contracts maximum the pressure inside the atria is maximum so that is during atrial contraction and atria contracts during late diastole late diastole so the atrial pressure is highest during late diastole during atrial contraction and it is minimum during it is minimum during y descent it is minimum during y descent and we have already discussed the y descent is early filling phase it is the early diastole during the early diastole the wall opens the tricuspid wall opens when the tricuspid wall opens all the blood that was present in the right atrium comes down when that comes down the pressure in the right atrium decreases now this is that crow that i was talking about and uh, i i tell about uh, uh, i tell about the photographic memory again and again so uh, uh, if you if you memorize this picture you will be able to to solve all kind of question now now focus on the aortic pressure this is the red one is the aortic pressure now the maximum aortic pressure is now this is having we are having ejection phase so the ejection phase is divided into two the early and the late so this is the slow ejection phase so we are having the maximum aortic pressure during slow ejection phase this is the slow ejection phase and we are having the minimum aortic pressure coming down 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 and there this is atrial systole or late diastole now coming toward the ventricular pressure again we are having maximum ventricular pre pressure during ejection phase during ejection phase maximum during late ejection phase maximum during late ejection phase and minimum during coming down 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 it is the end of isovolumetric relaxation end of isovolumetric relaxation or the start of rapid inflow start of diastole we already discussed that now coming toward the atrial pressure now this one this one the green one is actually the atrial pressure now this is actually maximum during atrial systole i already discussed that that is maximum during atrial systole and that is minimum during y descent that is minimum during y descent that is minimum during y descent and that is the y descent occurs during rapid inflow similarly this is ventricular volume this is maximum during maximum during maximum during isovolumetric contraction isovolumetric contraction and it is maximum achievement is the achievement is actually late diastole that is atrial systole but present during 
isoelementary contraction if that is not an option then you have to pick the uh, lead diastole so there is an mcq maximum blood flow to the heart in systole or diastole so if this is your heart this is your left ventricle we take out the left ventricle this is left ventricle this is aorta this is aortic wall so when the heart contracts uh, these are the origin of coronary arteries the coronary arteries originate after the aortic wall so what happens uh, when the blood comes during systole they open the wall when they open the wall they blocks these foramina they blocks these foramina when these foramina are blo blocked there is no blood coming to the coronary arteries Uh, there is the least amount of blood coming to the coronary. So in, in systole, there is no blood flow to the heart. In diastole, what happens? These walls are open. When these walls are open, so the blood comes again to coronary arteries. So the blood flow to the coronary artery is mainly from the aorta, and this is reverse blood. During systole, these walls are closed, so the the blood cannot move toward that area. Blood can only flow when these these walls are open and the foramen are open. When the foramen are open, so the blood flow to the coronary arteries. There is another MCQ. Increasing the heart rate would cause what? Decreased blood flow to the heart in systole. Decreased blood flow in diastole. We know that single beat is equal to systole plus diastole. So the 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 heart takes time in diastole. That is 0.8 second. And during systole, that is 0.2 second. So and the blood flow is mainly during diastole. So if you are increasing the heart rate, you are decreasing this duration. So diastole is more effective. So there is decreased blood flow in diastole. There is decrease increasing heart rate would cause decreased blood flow in diastole because blood flow to the heart is mainly during diastole. And if you are increasing the heart the heart rate, you are actually decreasing the diastole. And if you are decreasing the diastole, this point eight is decreased. The only condition during uh, the both of course both systole and diastole the duration of both is decreased. That is point that comes to point one. Suppose that is affected more diastole. If that is affected more and blood flow to the heart is mainly during diastole, so decreased blood flow. to the heart and diastole if you are increasing the heart